In this video, we're going to compare the Elgato Wave DX against the Shure SM7B in terms of podcasting, live streaming, and vocal recording. We're going to do a whole bunch of different tests, we're going to rate them on our own scorecard, and we're going to talk about which one of these microphones we think is right for you. Now, as you can see in this video, both of these microphones are connected to the Rodecaster Duo. The Elgato Wave DX has 52 dB of gain, and the Shure SM7B has 59 dB of gain. In case you are wondering, I'm sure a lot of people watching this video from the Elgato side, the Elgato Wave XLR can also power both of these microphones. So if you are heavily immersed inside the Elgato ecosystem, just know that their XLR preamp that they have, the Elgato Wave DX, will happily power either one of these microphones. So you really can just choose the microphone that you think will be best for you. Now in terms of current pricing and specs, we do have links down in the description below where you can find both of these microphones and everything else that you see in this video, current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. That being said, in this video today, right now the Shure SM7B is roughly four times the price of the Elgato Wave DX, and that is something that we need to keep in mind as we compare both of these microphones. Next, in terms of overall design and build quality, let's start with the Elgato Wave DX. This is an all metal design on this microphone. You can see that there is a bunch of perforations or venting around the capsule of this microphone. It's an end address microphone, so you speak into the end of it. This is a really solid, sturdy looking design here. On the back of the microphone, you will find that it has the XLR output. As you can see on the side of the microphone, it has a boom arm or a swing arm that you can easily adjust no matter how you want to set up this microphone. Next, we have the Shure SM7B. Again, this does have an all metal design. You can take off the foam windscreen if you want. It reveals that it has a similar metal protector around the capsule that's vented. Really solid design here. It does come with two different windscreens, but this is the most common one that people use. Towards the rear of the microphone, there are two switches. One will do a low frequency roll off and one will give you a mid boost. I don't recommend using either one of these switches. For the mounting system, it does have a full yoke mount. You can take this off if you want to invert the microphone or flip it or whatever you want to do with it. As we move towards the microphone mount to the stand, you can see that the XLR output of the microphone is conveniently run along the yoke mount here, so it gives you easy access to plug it in. Just gives you better looking cable management. Next, I'll quickly put the specs of both microphones on the screen so you can see them. The big takeaways here are that the Elgato Wave DX has a frequency response of 50 Hz to 15 kHz with a sensitivity of minus 52 dB. And the Shure SM7B has a slightly wider frequency response of 50 Hz to 20 kHz and a sensitivity of minus 59 dB. Next, let's just quickly go through the frequency response of both of these microphones. The Elgato Wave does not publish one, so we'll just quickly go through the Shure SM7B. As you can see here, there is a low cut below 100 Hz. After that, there's a very subtle scoop in the low mid frequencies. It's flat after that from 1000 Hz all the way to 4000 Hz. And from here, you can see that it is pretty sculpted. There's a couple bumps in the upper frequencies and in the upper air frequencies, there's a whole bunch of cuts before it eventually rolls off around 10,000 or 11,000 Hz. Now, so far I've been having these microphones slightly off to the side. I'm gonna demonstrate how they sound in a worst case scenario if you make plosive sounds right into the microphone. Peter put peanut butter on his pineapple pizza. 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 If you have a keyboard and mouse going in the background of your recording, this is what it sounds like when you're listening to the Elgato Wave DX. If you have a keyboard and mouse going in the background of your recording, this is what it sounds like with the Shure SM7B. If you have rustling paper, if you're shuffling throughout your podcast or live stream, this is what it sounds like on the Elgato Wave DX. If you have rustling paper or shuffling in the background of your podcast or live stream, this is what it sounds like on the Shure SM7B. And now we have a white noise test, which will further help us understand the noise rejection of these microphones.
This is what the Elgato Wave DX sounds like if you adjust it throughout your podcast, live stream, or vocal recording. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like if you adjust it throughout your podcast, live stream, or vocal recording. This is what it sounds like if you tap or bump the Elgato Wave DX throughout your podcast, live stream, or recording. This is what it sounds like if you tap or bump your Shure SM7B throughout your podcast, live stream, or recording. This is what the Elgato Wave DX sounds like if you have processing turned on on the Rodecaster Duo. This will give you some EQ, compression, a de -esser, and some other small changes to help you get a feel for how this microphone can sound with audio processing. This is what the Shure SM7B sounds like with the same default dynamic microphone processing settings on the Rodecaster Duo. This will give you some EQ, some compression, a de -esser, again just to help you hear how this microphone can sound if you add audio processing. Next, let's do a quick blind microphone test, again, just so you can hear how these microphones sound to help you make up your mind. No, no, it's not the computers. The computers were fine, and the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is indeed 42. The problem is that nobody knew what the question was. No, no, it's not the computers. The computers were fine, and the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is indeed 42. The problem is that nobody knew what the question was. All right, I just finished editing everything so far, so I've heard everything exactly like you've heard it. Next, we're gonna go through my scorecard and ratings. We're gonna talk about it a little bit, and then I'm gonna make my final recommendation as to which one of these I think is right for you and why. So first of all, in terms of build quality here, the Elgato Wave DX here is super well built. I think everybody will be happy with the construction of this microphone. I think it's gonna last a long time. I think it's easy to use. I think it's easy to position. It's nice and easy. The Shure SM7B is just a little bit heavier. You can tell that there are nicer components involved in the construction of this microphone. The Elgato Wave DX is definitely good, but the Shure SM7B, I'm a sucker for anything with a yoke mount. I think they're nicer, they're more professional, they last a long time. And the Shure SM7B just has the legacy. This thing's been around for tens of years. I've never heard of anybody complaining about build quality of the Shure SM7B over a long period of time. The Elgato Wave is definitely lighter weight and it's only been around a year, so it hasn't really stood the test of time yet. Next, in terms of plosives, the Shure SM7B and the Elgato Wave DX, I think are unbeatable. You can talk directly into these microphones and those PMB sounds don't rattle the diaphragm of the microphone at all. You don't need any third-party windscreens or pop filters or anything like that. They're both great. Next, in terms of noise rejection for the keyboard test, the paper test, and the white noise test, both of these microphones did great, but if you're comparing them, the Shure SM7B does do a better job of rejecting those background sounds and keeping a cleaner recording. The Elgato Wave DX definitely picked up just a little bit more. Same thing when we talk about handling noise of these microphones. They're both definitely within a workable range. The Elgato Wave DX, especially compared to other microphones in these price ranges, performed really well. But when handling these microphones, the frequency resonance within the microphone, you can hear it a lot more from the Elgato Wave DX, and the Shure SM7B is a lot more subtle. Neither microphone is silent when you handle them, but I think that the Wave DX was just a little bit worse than the Shure SM7B. Next, in terms of how these microphones actually sound, I'm giving both of these microphones top marks. At the beginning of this video, we started with the Elgato Wave DX, and it was super easy for me to listen to. I love the way that this sounded, especially on my voice. It sounds really full while also sounding clear. It doesn't sound condensery at all, like that type of clear, and it's not even clear like the same way that the RE20 is clear. It just sounds really full and easy to listen to. It sounds like a really nice sounding dynamic microphone. When we cut over to the Shure SM7B, it, it sounds really nice as well, but you start to understand why people call this microphone smooth and rounded. It just has a little bit of frequ frequency loss there, but as you listen to it over a longer period of time, you do hear how smooth and easy it is to listen to for a long period of time. And you can understand why the Shure SM7B is a favorite for that reason. So I think both of these, when it comes to frequency response, they both sound good. You can listen to them both for a long period of time, but it's ultimately going to come down to which one of these you like sounding the best. This does bring me to the next point now. The next point that we discuss is price and value. 
the Elgato Wave DX, I think, is by far the most value between both of these. It's a quarter of the price. You could buy four of these for the price of the Shure SM7B. Does that mean that the Shure SM7B is a ripoff? I don't think so. I think the Shure SM7B is priced fairly for what it is. It's gone through all these things. It has excellent build quality. It stood the test of time. It rejects plosives, noise rejection, handling noise, all that stuff. But it's still just quite expensive, and a lot of people need to make the decision as to which is right for them. If that's you, the Elgato Wave just offers better value, especially in my opinion. Okay, so what's my final recommendation here? What do I actually recommend for you? If you have the money for it, the Shure SM7B is unbeatable. It does a better job at rejecting background noise and handling noise, which means that you have to refilm less often. You can film more hours of the day. That's how I treat this microphone. If it's noisy around here and I couldn't otherwise film, I can still film with the Shure SM7B. It saves my butt, which means I'm more productive, which means I can do more. And in that professional setting, the Shure SM7B is worth every penny. That being said, if you don't have those constraints, if you're not under the gun to produce content all the time, or if you're just getting started, the value of the Elgato Wave DX is insane. This is a really, really good sounding microphone. It looks really good on camera. It has slightly worse noise rejection and handling noise, but for the money, that easily makes up for it. It definitely has more value. So when comparing both of these microphones, to me, it's a value discussion. Do you need that last 5% of handling noise and background noise rejection? Or do you want to take that last 5% and get four microphones instead of one. That's why the value discussion here is a value discussion. The Shure SM7B is definitely a better microphone, but I don't think even 5% of your audience would notice the difference between these microphones. Most people don't listen that closely or they're not using the right audio equipment to even tell a difference between these microphones. And the Elgato Wave DX just offers a ton of value that way. I hope this video has been helpful. If you want to see more videos with either one of these microphones, if you have questions about either one of these microphones, please let me know down in the comment section below. Again, if you are looking for current up-to-date pricing, or you're looking to buy either one of these microphones, we have links down in the description below that will help you. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.